Republicans defend former President Donald Trump. Others have done the opposite, including former Republican Congressman Liz Cheney. She has shown up on the campaign trail with Vice President Kamala Harris. And will that impact and that sort of division have any effect on Election Day? Let's talk about that and more with my guest tonight. Two conservatives joining me, former FERC Chairman Neil Chatterjee and Brittany Martinez, former congressional aide, coming up late with me tonight here on The Final Five. Guys, good to see you again. Thanks for both coming in. Thanks for having us. It, it was striking, Brittany, to see uh, Liz Cheney, uh, staunch conservative congresswoman, daughter of Dick Cheney, side by side with Kamala Harris. These are strange times, I think, in which we live. Absolutely. And maybe you'll disagree with me here, and that's okay. I think that's, you know, important to have civil discourse, is that people are, a lot of Republicans are probably going to say, you know what, does it matter? She's a rhino. Like, who cares what she says? But the truth is, it does matter. She is a lifelong Republican. Her president, her father is a former vice president. And when we look at some polling that came out just this week, 9% of Republicans are saying they're going to vote for Harris, where just a month ago, that was at 4%. So these people coming out and doing the rallies and coming forward, it does move the needle a little bit. We know the people it's not for a lot of people. I mean, look, we had a lot of a lot of Democrats vote for Donald Trump in 2016. So this is not uncommon. I think what's just striking, Neil, is when you have these these figures who have been long associated with the uh, with the Republican movement on stage with Kamala Harris. Well, I mean, it's just interesting the way that it's being covered. You've on the other side got RFK Jr. and Tulsi Gabbard out on stage with. Uh, former President Trump mm -hmm. and J.D. Vance. But I've actually got a different take on this. I do disagree with you a little bit. Um, in many ways, when you think about it, look, I'm a traditional Republican conservative. Donald Trump is kind of the moderate in this race. I think Kamala Harris is being perceived as to the left. And to have someone as associated with the conservative movement, particularly on foreign policy, as Liz and Dick Cheney coming out and supporting mm -hmm. Kamala Harris in a weird way, it makes Donald Trump look even more moderate to some voters, to low propensity voters. Well, look at, look at you know, I'm thinking about 2003, Iraq war, and Dick Cheney was just this boogeyman for, for, for so many people on the left. And I covered a lot of the rallies and a lot of a protest back then. But, but during that, it just shows you, illustrates this cycle in which we find ourselves in right now, where there are shifting priorities for Democrats and shifting priorities for Republicans. I mean, I, I hope to never really see a cycle like this again. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are both tired as well. I mean, think about it. Just in this year, you know, it went from Joe Biden dropping out and then VP Harris being the nominee to just, you know, all the Republicans running and then Trump still getting the nomination. So it's just been a really crazy election cycle. And uh, I hope that we get back to a place of normalcy. Who knows? Maybe that'll take another cycle or two, but we're obviously not there right now. Well, I mean, look, look, this past summer, I mean, we had the, the attempt on former President Trump's yeah. life. And then a week later, Joe Biden drops out of the race. I mean, I and that was less Less than, what, about 70 days ago when all that hit the fan. I mean, look, our attention span for politics has just gotten shorter and shorter and shorter, <laughs> and I think social media and other variables yeah. contribute to that. But I also think what's happening a little bit is the political coalitions are shifting. Um, today's actually my son's 16th birthday, and he was learning about the Kennedy assassination. And what I explained to him about the dynamics with LBJ and Kennedy and the 64 election and how LBJ was able to get Kennedy's agenda through the Senate because he had credibility with the white Southern bloc in the Senate. My son was like, whoa, whoa, what? The Democrats were the white Southern party? And I said, yeah, the coalitions changed. Mm -hmm. I think Donald Trump is changing the coalitions and changing the math. And I think you're seeing him make inroads with, uh, with African Americans and Hispanic males in particular. And you're starting to see some of these foreign policy folks who tended to maybe be against the Iraq war coming his way because he has taken a different approach, quite frankly, to the traditional approach that Republicans have taken on foreign policy. I think he's shifted the coalitions. He's having some uh, gaining support amongst union voters who used to yeah. be, you know, um, uh, ironclad Democrat supporters. Uh, the coalitions are, are, are changing. Well, that was Sean O'Brien from the Teamsters. Uh, had some not pleasant things to say about Democrats, even though there was a big bailout of the pension plan. The Democrats, put, I think they saw that as an investment that clearly didn't pay off when it came to that. Uh, Brittany, we also have, uh, we talked about Congress quite a bit on this show, too, and, and that's up for grabs. I mean, are we seeing, do you see a lot of people who support Donald Trump also going in to support Republicans? Are we going to see some split, split voting uh, among a lot of voters? Oh, that's a great question. I wish I had a crystal ball. I don't know. I mean, I think traditionally, right, like the, the conversations that I'm having with folks on the Hill is that the House will go whichever way that the White House does. And mm -hmm. I don't know if that's what we traditionally think, but um, this time around, that seems to be the case, especially because it's such a slim margin right now. Yeah. Whoever does take the House is going to be the slimmest of margins again. And I think it'll go whichever way the presidency does. That's a conventional wisdom, but here's another hot take. Uh, 
Donald Trump's doing a rally in Madison Square Garden. He's out campaigning in California. People are asking, why is he wasting time in these deep blue states? Because that House majority is going to be decided in those deep blue yep. states. And to the extent that he can help carry Republican House candidates, um, I think that'll be very beneficial. In the Senate, if you look back historically the last probably decade or so, most Senate races go the way of the presidential. I think John Tester's probably in a lot of trouble in Montana. Yeah. I think the two interesting races to watch for me, can Sherrod Brown outperform uh, Harris in, in, oh. in, 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 in Ohio, yeah. and can Larry Hogan outperform Trump in Maryland? Uh, I think they both probably have a tough lift, but super interesting yeah. races for sure. Well, clearly uh, a lot of different views on this. I like to get them from, from people uh, on, on both sides of the issue, too, so good to see both. Neil and Brittany, thanks for both coming Thank in. You. Thanks for having me. Good to see you again. Final Five is back.